Hello class 4 student. I hope you are all doing well. Today we are going to start with the chapter 14 that is the physical divisions of India. Now the main points are the Himalayas and the northern plains, the peninsular plateau and the great Indian desert, the coastal plains and the islands. So class let's start filling the blanks. First we can find ice on the top of a dash, mountain, hill. Second Dash are good for agriculture. Plains, mountains. Third, dash are deep land in mountains, valleys, plateaus. Fourth, the land in dash is full of sand, plains, desert. Now, you have to read carefully these sentence and filling the blanks accordingly. India is big country. Its northern part is covered by the Himalayas and its southern eastern and western side is covered by sea and ocean. So India has different landforms in different regions that divide the country into different physical divisions. The Himalayas, the northern plains, the peninsular plateau, the Indian desert, the capital plains and the islands. Now the Himalayas. The Himalayas are the biggest mountain range in the world. This covers the northern part of our country. Himalayas means a daub of snow. Himalayas means a daub of snow in Sanskrit. There are three mountain ranges in the Himalayas. These are the Himadri or the Greater Himalayas, the Himachal or the Lesser Himalayas, the Shivalik or the Outer Himalayas. Here you can see physical map of the Himalayas. Now the Himadri or the Greater Himalayas. The Himadri or the Greater Himalayas is the northernmost and the highest range of the Himalayas. Its average height is more than 6000 meters. It has many peaks. The Everest, the highest peak in the world, is located in the Himadri. The Everest has a height of 8848 meters. Other high peaks like Mountain K2 or Godwin Austin, Kanchenjunga. Nanda Devi and Namcha Barwa are also located in the Himadri. Kanchenjunga is the highest peak in India. The Himadri is covered in ice throughout this year. So no trees or plants grow in this region. Here you can see the picture. Mount Everest, the Siachen Glacier. The Himadri has many glaciers. Gangotri is one of them. A glacier is a river of snow. When it melts, its water flows to the river. The river Ganga comes out of the Gangotri. The sources of the river Yamna and the river Brahmaputra are also there in the Himadri. The Siachen Glacier is also in the Himadri. The Himachal or the Lesser Himalayas. The Himachal or the Lesser Himalayas. The Himachal or the Lesser Himalayas is in the middle of the three ranges of the Himalayas south to the Himadri or the greater Himalayas. Its height is lower than the Himadri. That varies from 4600 meters to 3700 meters. Some of the important mountains of this range is Pir Panjal and Dholadhar. The Himachal range has a number of valleys like the Kashmir Valley in Jammu and Kashmir and Kangra Valley in Himachal Pradesh. Some famous hill stations like Shimla, Masuri, Nainital, Ranikhet, Almora, Manali and Darjeeling are located in the Himachal range of Himalayas. Some mountains in this range have thick forests in which there are trees of oak, fir, deodar and pine. Here you can see the pictures of Tiger Reserve in Shivalik, a fruit orchard in Shivalik. The Shivalik or the Outer Himalayas. The Shivalik or the Outer Himalayas is the southernmost and the lower range of Himalayas. The height of this range varies from 1100 meter to 900 meters. This has a number of valleys like Dehradun, Kothli Dun and Patli Dun. These valleys are flat so these are called Dun. This region has thick forest. Many tiger reserves and national parks are established here. Fruits are grown on the mountain's slope. So a number of fruit orchids are seen in this region. Here you can see the picture of 
Mount Everest and the Siachen Glacier. The Eastern Himalayas or the Purvachal. The Purvachal or the Eastern Himalayas is the eastern range of the Himalayas in the northeastern region of India. This range has low hills. Its height varies from 3000 meters to 1500 meters. There are many hills like the Patkai Hills, the Naga Hills and the Manipur Hills and the Mizo Hills in this region. There are thick forests in this region as it gets heavy rainfall in monsoon. Importance of the Himalayas The Himalayas form a natural boundary between India and China. The Himalayas acted as a natural barrier against the foreign invaders in the past. The Himalayas protect us from the cold wind blowing from the north. It prevents the monsoon from going out of the country. Glaciers in the Himalayas are source of many rivers like the Ganga and the Yamuna. We get many forest products like wood, resin, medicines, etc. from the Himalayas. These forests are home to number of animals like yak, goats, snow, leopards, musk deer and wild sheep. Now, the Northern Plains. Northern Plains are located to the south of the Himalayas. This region of flat and fertile land extends from Punjab in the west to Assam in the east. The Northern Plains are formed by the deposition of soil brought by the Himalayan rivers like Satluj, the Ganga and the Brahmaputra. Each river has made its basin which is drained by the water of the respective river and its branches called the tributaries. A tributary is a small river that joins the main river. Here you can see the physical map of the northern plains. Now the Satluj Basin. River Satluj and its tributaries have made a big basin in the western part of the northern plains called the Satluj Basin. This basin is very fertile and the main crop grown in it is wheat, rice, sugarcane, oil seeds, pulses and cotton are the other crops grown in this basin. The state of Punjab and Haryana are in the Satluj Basin. Now the Ganga Basin. River Ganga and its tributaries form the Ganga Basin in the middle region of the northern plains. River Yamuna is a tributary of the River Ganga. Other tributaries are Gomti, Ghagra, Gandak and Kosi that come out of from the Himalayas. Chambal and Betwa rivers that joins the Ganga river are from Plateau region. River Sun is also tributary of the Ganga river in the south. The Ganga and the Yamuna river meet at Allahabad. The meeting point is called the Sangam. The main crops grown in the Ganga basin are rice, wheat, sugarcane, oil seeds, pulses and jute. States that lie in the Ganga basin are Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal and the part of Madhya Pradesh. The Ganga enters the plains at Haridwar, Uttarakhand. Now, the Brahmaputra Basin. The Brahmaputra River and its tributaries form the Brahmaputra Basin in the eastern part of the northern plains. River Brahmaputra originates in Tibet. Here it is called Sangpo River. It enters India at Arunachal Pradesh and flows to the state of Assam and Meghalaya and then enters Bangladesh. Tista, Subansiri and Lohit are the tributaries of the river Brahmaputra. It joins the river Ganga in Bangladesh and flow together towards the Bay of Bengal, forming the largest delta of the world known as Sundarban. The main crops grown in the Brahmaputra basin is rice and jute. Now, importance of the northern plains. The northern plains have fertile soil that is suitable for growing different types of the crops. So, this region is called the food bowl of India. The northern plains get sufficient rainfall, so there are many rivers, lakes, streams, etc. in this region. The fertile land of the northern plains supports a large population. It is easy to make roads and railways lines in the plains that helps in the development of the region. Now, the peninsular plateau. A plateau is a high land higher than its surroundings. The top of a plateau is flat like a table, so it is called the tableland. The peninsular plateau region lies to the south of the northern plains. 
This region is triangular in shape. Land in this region is rocky and not flat. A peninsula is surrounded by water on three sides. The peninsular plateau is surrounded by the Bay of Bengal in the east, the Indian Ocean in the south and the Arabian Sea in the west. The peninsular plateau region has three plateaus like the Malwa plateau, the Chota Nagpur plateau and the Deccan plateau. Here you can see the physical map of the peninsular plateau. Now the Malwa plateau. The Malwa plateau is located between the Vindhya hills and the Aravalli hills. This plateau is in the northwestern part of the peninsular plateau. Tambal and Mahi rivers flow through this plateau. Here you can see the Malwa plateau. Now the Chota Nagpur plateau. The Chota Nagpur plateau is located in the eastern part of the peninsular plateau. Damodar and Subarnareka rivers flow through this plateau. Here you can see Chota Nagpur plateau. Now Deccan plateau. The Deccan plateau is located to the south of the Vindhya hills and the Satpura hills. On both the east and the west side of the Deccan plateau, there are the eastern ghats and the western ghats. Both ghats are long ranges of hills. The western ghats are continuous but the eastern ghats are broken as some rivers fall into the Bay of Bengal, cutting through the hills. The height of the western ghats is more than that of the eastern ghats. Krishna, Kaveri, Godavari, Mahanandi, Narmada and Tapi flow through the Deccan plateau. Now, importance of the peninsular plateau. Different types of minerals such as iron, copper, coal, manganese and bauxite are found in the peninsular plateau. So this region has a number of steel plants. The peninsular plateau has many thick forests which are home to many wild animals and sources to fulfill our needs. The soil of peninsular plateau is fertile in which rice, oil seeds, sugarcane and cotton are grown in good quantity. Now the Great Indian Desert. A desert is a dry land which receives little or no rain for many years. So there is little vegetation in the desert. It has sandy lands so plants or trees are not seen in good numbers. India's western part has a big desert called the Thar Desert of the Great Indian Desert. Most of the Thar Desert lies in the state of Rajasthan and in some parts of Gujarat also. The Thar Desert enters Pakistan also. It is a dry, hot, sandy desert. Only thorny bushes grow at some places. There is a big difference between day and night temperatures. Days are hot and night are cool in the Thar Desert. Here you can see physical map of the Great Indian Desert. An oasis is the only source of water in the Thar Desert, around which some plants and trees grow and where agriculture is possible. Importance of the Great Indian Desert. We get marble from this region. We get minerals like copper, silver and limestone from this region. Now the coastal plains. Coastal plains are flat, fertile land by the side of the sea. In India, these plains are located on the east and west side of the peninsular plateau called the eastern and the western coastal plains. The beaches on the coastal plains are attractive for tourists. Many seaports like Mumbai, Kandla, Vishakhapatnam located on the coastal plains help in the development of the international trade. Here you can see physical map of the coastal plains and islands. Eastern coastal plains are fertile land that is good for agriculture and the western coastal plains is place suitable for fishing. Now the islands. In India, there are two groups of islands, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands and the Lakshadweep Islands. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands are a group of more than 500 islands located in the Bay of Bengal. It has many thick forests. The Lakshadweep Islands are a group of 36 islands located in the Arabian Sea. Now the importance of the islands. These islands have many special kinds of plants, trees and animals. Many tourists come to these islands to see their natural beauty. Now, major rivers of India. Rivers in India are of two types, perennial rivers and non-perennial rivers. Perennial rivers have water throughout the year as these rivers come out of the glaciers on the mountain. These glaciers do not dry up in summer. These rivers 
receive rain water also. The Ganga, Yamuna, Indus, Brahmaputra, Satluj, Ghagra, Gomti and Kosi are perennial rivers. All these perennial rivers are in the northern part of the country. Non-perennial rivers do not have water throughout the year. These rivers receive water only from the monsoon rains and these are dry during the summer. The Mahanandi, Godavari, Krishna are the non-perennial rivers. These rivers flow through the Indian Peninsula. The Mahanandi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri fall in the Bay of Bengal but the Narmada and Tapi fall into the Arabian Sea. You can see rivers of India. Now valued fact. Our country has all type of landforms. Awesome fact. Only Son tribals were seen in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands during the British rule. Now let's learn new words. Tributary, a branch of river. Perennial river, a river in which there is water throughout the year. Now kids, let's remember. The different landforms in India are the Himalayas, the Northern Plains, the Peninsular Plateau, the Indian Desert, the Coastal Plains and the Islands. The Himalayas are in the northern part of the India. It has three ranges, the Himadri, the Himachal and the Shivalik. The Purvanchal is in the northeast. The northern plains are south of the Himalayas. The Satluj Basin, the Ganga Basin and the Brahmaputra Basin are its three parts. The Thar Desert or the Great Indian Desert is in the northwest of India in the western side of the Rajasthan and Gujarat. The coastal plains lie along with Bay of Bengal in the east and the Arabian Sea in the west of the Indian Peninsula. India has many perennial rivers like the Ganga, Yamuna, Indus, Brahmaputra, Satluj, Ghagra, Gomti and Kosi and non-perennial rivers like the Mahanandi, Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri, Narmada and Tapi. I hope you all like this session. Now we will meet in the next class. Till then, bye bye.